So in this video, we're going to introduce you to XNA 4.0, which is um, the XNA setup that we're going to use that will work with uh, Visual Studio 2010 and with a little luck, Visual Studio 2012, which is what we're using right now. Um, you can find uh, setups online to get it to work with Visual Studio 2012. It doesn't work standard out of the box. Um, you do have to do a little finagling. So what we're going to do here is we're going to create a new project. We're going to create an XNA Game Studio 4.0 project, which you can see down here. So if I click down here, I'm going to choose just a Windows game 4.0. You can see that there's a lot of options, even Xbox 360 games and whatnot. So what that means is when you build it, it will build it and compile it for the processor that's on the Xbox 360. So what we're going to do right now is we're just going to build a standard Windows game. And you can see you can do phones and everything like that too. Okay. So I'm just going to call this um, intro demo. Intro demo. And I've saved it in a folder called graphics. And I'm going to hit OK. What I want you to show you, or what I want to show you, is the structure that's set up when we use XNA. Um, it's not your standard structure of a, of a console program or a form program where there's really not a lot going on. As soon as you create an XNA project, you are thrown right into the mix. It's kind of sink or swim. There's a ton of stuff that's going on that you need to understand before you can get started. But the basics of it is simple. It is nothing more than a giant game loop. That's it. It uses the two main functionalities from a game loop that we really care about, update and draw. We are going to use those things to create our programs. So we see that the setup is the same as any other uh, Visual Studio environment. So we still have our Solution Explorer and everything like that. Nothing's different here. So inside of our code, you see that there's a ton more libraries. We have all these XNA libraries that are set up in here. We're just going to ignore those for now, but they are pretty necessary when you're building your XNA programs. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that's set up in order to actually do graphical elements on here. So these two items here, this graphics device manager and the sprite batch, we're going to need these, but the main one we're going to be using for all of our drawing is the sprite batch. We'll come back to this later. You're pretty much going to leave all of this content alone. XNA, when you create a, a generic project, it does a very good job of, exp of explaining itself and what everything does. So take the time and read these. Um, essentially, the initialize uh, function essentially just initializes all the base components of um, the XNA uh, project and gets everything up and running. You'll see here it has a section to do, add your initialization logic here. So this is essentially where you're going to put all of your setup stuff. So um, in our form programs, we typically put this in like the form load section. So this is where you're going to do all your setup. This is not where you load your media, though. This is just where you do your setup. So this might be like um, initializing like arrays and that kind of stuff, data, uh, getting all that kind of stuff. Set up your basic settings. Um, now as we move down, we get to the load content section. This is where you load your media. So here we see to do, use this dot content to load your game content here. Now we're going to modify that a little bit, but uh, just to simplify it, but essentially all of the media that we're going to load, this means sounds, images, videos, all that kind of stuff is going to be loaded right here, right below this to do line, nowhere else. Now underneath that we have our unload content. Unload is really saying, okay, when we're all done with stuff, Let's free it up so the memory is available for other applications or this application as well. Below that, we have the two main subprograms or two main portions of a game loop, update and draw. So the way you can interpret the way C Sharp works is simple. Update is called, then draw is called. Then update is called, then draw is called. Then update is called, then draw is called. So it goes update, draw, update, draw, update, draw. And this happens forever. You can see the first line that we have here right inside of uh, uh, the update is that it's already getting user input. So it's saying, okay, if the gamepad, meaning your Xbox 360 controller, if currently you're, it's the player one gamepad, player index is one, and the back button is currently pressed. So that means if the player one has pressed the back button on their Xbox 360 controller, exit the program. That's it. That's all it does. Now, we're going to clean up this a little bit because this is um, not the style that we've been taught. We always put our opening and closing brackets in here just to keep things clean and aligned appropriately. Um, 
but we can add in all of our other functionality in here as well. Like I said, update is going to handle a lot of the stuff. In XNA, update also handles your user input. Okay, so a lot of things are kind of combined in XNA. So update is really going to be where the bulk of your stuff is. That does not mean that your update subprogram should be 5,000 lines long. You should be using extra subprograms and calling these subprograms inside of update. Your code should still be clean and readable. You shouldn't just be throwing things in there willy-nilly and uh, just cluttering it up. It should be clean and readable. So below the update, we have the draw section. The draw section is where we can actually set up and start to draw things. You'll see, as I said before, every time the the once the game loop starts going, we see update, draw, update, draw, update, draw. What this line here does, this graphics device dot clear color dot cornflower blue. Essentially, what that does is it takes whatever you have on the screen right now and it just paints over it in a cornflower blue color. So if I run the program basic program no code in it whatsoever that we've written we end up with a cornflower blue screen that does nothing absolutely nothing but it is running and it's actually um, perpetually going because it is stuck in an infinite game loop right now we just don't have anything set up for it to do so that's the basics of what vi or uh, what XNA looks like in its basic structure in the next module what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up how to do graphical fonts